Today we're going to be looking at another legendary, a Hoenn legendary Enki Ogre with a massive 530 base stat total with 150 in special. I had some pretty high hopes for this run and this was a pretty requested win and I finally decided to do it. But this one took a couple of runs to really get down and I had to do three runs to fully refine it. In the Tyranitar video we experimented with doing the times four real life speed. I didn't think it worked out too well and I'm doing this one before that video released so maybe I made the right decision to come back but I think experimentation is pretty good so let's get to it now first things first the name for this run is gonna be Shrek uh, because key ogre uh, ogre get it I thought it was pretty good and as usual guys likes and comments help these videos and small channels grow the most so if you want to support me help me out just scroll down type in Shrek and we'll see if we can navigate the swamp today this one was pretty interesting because the move pool was very shallow you can see that we only start off with water pulse and we don't get anything else to a body slam to level 15 and after that you can see some of the later moves we're never going to make it to that high of a level and we're pretty much relying on the very powerful coverage moves of ice beam thunderbolt and earthquake in the later game as for the start of the game it's very simple minimum battles one bug catcher in viridian forest and then you're on to brock and it's just a series of one shot with water pulse going over to mount moon the only kind of big difference here is that i battle this hiker that has the two geodudes and an onyx it's a lot of experience and since they are double weak to water it's very efficient to do but this is key and we'll see that come up right when we get into cerulean because this allows you to hit level 13 right at the end on the super nerd and from there you can pick up the rare candy you can use both of them and then you can have body slam and now all of a sudden that opens up misty there's not much to really say about this one i just use body slam her pokemon and team just about with every sanqui um, trainer is they're going to be better and they have sweet it's a little bit annoying. I do get low. It's not really an easy battle, but it's definitely doable and the extra level we get out of it does help when we look at rival number two. And the main thing level 16 does and the reason why you want to fight Misty first is because it puts this Pidgeotto into a two shot water pulse range, which means that you can avoid more sand attacks. You have, you're less likely to take one and that helps a lot. And with body slam and water pulse, it's very formidable and we just kind of cruise through the rest of this fight. But this was pretty much the huge adjustment I had to make for this run using early rare candies and that's something you normally don't have to do but it was pretty pivotal to getting a great Kyogre time here and you might not notice but I usually record for the past several videos I've been recording at 240 frames per second it might seem like overkill but when you're matching up footage to the audio and that's what I'm doing now a lot of times you have to stretch the footage and having that many frames allows you to not lose the overall quality of the footage so in this video when I stream I have to stream at 30 fps so you might notice a little choppier video hopefully you guys can forgive me and like i said you might not even notice but i thought i would say that while i'm doing the audio right now as for nugget bridge we don't need to go over it instead let's pick up down in the ssn the only thing to note is that i get the rare candy guarded by the gentleman and then we can move on to rival number three we can just quickly go over it it's essentially the same as rival number two and we just cruise through it we don't take a sand attack we're even stronger we got high base stat total the the only thing I will say, and I don't think I mentioned this up front, is that I edited manually in Photoshop the red on my Kyogre Sprite. So if you're wondering why it doesn't look like that, I felt like I needed to put it in there. So if you're wondering the disparity and why my Sprite looks better, that's why I edited it. Now we can take a look at the first real challenge of the run, and that's Lieutenant Surge. With good AI, that means there's going to be some problems. Now as for the Voltorb and Pikachu, they're not too bad. I mean, they're nothing really. The Voltorb I can't one shot, but it doesn't have an electric move, and Pikachu is a one shot but it's that thunderbolt from the Rachu that you really have to worry about on the first attempt i'm surviving it's looking decent then i get hit with a critical thunderbolt and that's all you need to know about that that's the first reset of the run and on the second attempt we get some typical surge shenanigans we get an x speed into just a thunder shock and that allows us to do enough damage to finish off the fight now this was very hard in practice i died a lot the extra two rare candies earlier did help a little bit but one reset not too bad i'll take it and after that we get access to Thunderbolt, top tier coverage move in Gen 1. I don't learn it immediately in the footage, but going forward to Rock Tunnel, it is helpful against the Slowpokes, and it's just very core. Cool.
core and key to the moveset moving forward. From there, we can skip immediately to Celadon, and the first thing I want to do is take on the Rocket Hideout. Water Pulse is good enough to get everything done, and we're looking at Giovanni in the background, and outside of the Sanqui version of Kangaskhan being an absolute monster, there's not really much to say. We still get past it really easy, and after that, it's time for a pretty early Celadon buy, which is what we usually do for these higher stat, better Pokemon. I do grab all of the fresh water lemonade soda pop TMs that I can just to get the extra money, and I'm able to afford five vitamins. I've mentioned this before, but Sanqui's a little bit bugged uh, in terms of special for some reason, so I can't buy calciums, so I buy five proteins. The only thing you really need to know for here is that I learned Ice Beam, and once again, it's a pretty pivotal move, and after we pick that up, we get Fly, and then we continue along the standard route to Pokemon Tower. And since there's nothing of note in here, everything's just a series of quick one-shots, we can just skip it. We don't have to waste video time on it. It's very easy. When I'm done with that, I head down to the Safari Zone. I pick up the final HMs of the run and we will be utilizing Surf in our moveset. Normally I don't, especially if a Pokemon has a deep move pool, but since Kyogre doesn't, it can really make use of that 135 base power move when you factor in Stab. And in neutral matchups, it's just really great. It gives you a lot of power, especially when you have 150 base special, and that's really all there is to say about it. The next victim is Erica, and I was trying to fight her immediately after I got Ice Beam, and it worked, but I I had more resets and something I say about legendaries all the time they have such high base stats that even just a couple of levels can give you so many stats that you'll be able to overcome challenges you couldn't previously and the series of one shots in the very easy battle was kind of a testament to that Erica especially in red and blue and even more so in Sanqui is just a nightmare for water types and it's pretty impressive to get past this one so early even though Koga would still be easy no matter what moveset we had I did want to go to Super Co first, and I don't really do anything extra. I do the standard stuff. Tent Floor, Carbos, Rare Candy, but Earthquake is absolutely key for this run, considering Kyogre can't learn Psychic, and it's really helpful going ahead. And I would say overall, Earthquake is probably the MVP of this run, because I'm not as sure it would be half as good as it was without Earthquake coverage in a couple of key fights. And from there, we can just take a look at Rival number five. And when you look at a fight like this, that's generally one of the huge challenges you have to overcome for a lot of runs I would say the vast majority it's really impressive when we're going here very under leveled only level 31 and we're basically just one shotting everything there's not much of a challenge we have a pretty varied move pool and there's not many things we're at least not gonna be able to do neutral damage to we got the physical damage for the Alakazam super effectives for pretty much everything else and without going too deep into this fight I'm just gonna say that it's impressive how Kyogre handled this fight and the choice to come here before Koga really kind of sped up the entire process and help me shaved off some minutes off of the what we'll see at the end of the run. Next up is Koga, and I make a blunder here. I don't use an elixir. I thought I had four earthquakes left and that'd be good enough, but I only have three. And that's really not too much of a problem considering how easy I make it through the fight. And it turns out to not really matter. It is a mistake, but what ends up costing me this one here is at the very end, I go for an earthquake on the wheezing. It's able to survive and it uses explosion. Now explosion is a fascinating move. If you didn't know when you use explosion, Explosion, it instantly lowers your defense by two stages. It doesn't state it uh, on the text, but it essentially does double the damage that it says, and it already does a crazy amount of damage. So I get knocked out to that for the second reset. And to keep it simple, on the second attempt, the first coughing does do a self-destruct. It does a lot of damage, but since I was able to save my earthquakes, and I guess the main thing here is I crit on the wheezing, it gets no chance to use explosion, and I just make it through on the second attempt. So two resets at this point, not too bad. From there, I'm taking a very relaxed, brisk swim down to Cinnabar. There's no extra battles today, even though they would be easy, because we are trying to be as fast as possible today. So by the time we make it to the end of Blaine's Gym, and we pick up a little Tombstoner, brother! We can quickly drown the Pokemon here to pick up the Volcano Badge and get that very beefy special boost that's gonna be very powerful on Kyogre. Now we can quickly just clean up the Gym Badge portion of the game. Sabrina's first. I have Earthquake, 100 base power with 100 base attack, does some pretty short work. The only thing really worth mentioning here is that Mr. Mime is just annoying and no substitute and it kind of wastes our time a little bit, but we make it through. There's no issue. I barely take any damage and Speaking of no issues, Giovanni 
Giovanni, perhaps the easiest trainer in the game. Uh, Pokemon Red and Blue Giovanni's just notoriously awful, and with a Surf this powerful, there's just no surprise that everything goes down very swiftly. And that's all the gems down. We only have six more battles to go, friends. After that, I pop an elixir, and I have eight rare candies left after initially using two at the start. And since I'm a little lower level, and rival number six can be tricky if you're really low, I go ahead and I get up to level 48 before I take on this challenge. And like we've been used to with this run, we pretty much run through this one. We have Thunderbolt for Pidgeot. We got Surf for Rhyhorn and Growlithe. We got Ice Beam for Execute. We got Thunderbolt for the Blastoise. And the only thing to really know is that Alakazam isn't a one shot. It might be with a range. But even then we have high enough special to tank an attack and we do really heavy damage anyway. So this one's very easy. It's just worth noting that I was stingy with my rare candies in my test runs and this fight was actually pretty difficult doing it at like level 40, 41. So that's all there really is to say about it and we can start to look ahead. The only thing of note looking ahead is that I pick up the rare candy in Victory Road because I felt like I needed that extra level. And another thing that I forgot to mention earlier when we were watching is that I pick up Blizzard inside of Pokemon Mansion and I don't even have it mentioned on the sidebar here. And I'm sure a lot of you are used to the, the overpowered 120 base power, 90% accurate Blizzard that we're used to in Gen 1. So it's worth reiterating that Blizzard in Gen 6 is 110 base power and it only has 70% accurate so it's pretty much like a thunder clone and it's definitely not as good as its original overpowered gen 1 counterpart but it is very useful in this run and we'll talk about why as we get to it and I don't really know where else I would bring this up at but as far as Sanqui runs go I think we've pretty much peaked now when you look at my regular runs I got software I got tools I can have exact damage ranges I know exactly when I'm at the most optimized experience to use rare candies and I really have a lot of control over refining those routes and I just don't have it with the Sanqui tools and they could just never be as good as the regular runs. I only bring that up to say that I am working on something to get more of a one to one ratio where I can actually do that stuff with these kind of runs and I'm thinking within the next few months I'm going to be abandoning the Sanqui tool and I'm going to be custom making my own ROMs to get us that one to one ratio and make things a little bit more competitive and that's just kind of some thoughts. I didn't know where else to throw it in and I thought I would just say that real quick here. And with that out of the way, let's just kick off the Elite Four. Now going back to what I just said, not being able to refine, I did hold on to my rare candy because I wasn't quite sure when would be the best spot to use it to give me like an extra level that I wouldn't normally have at the best possible time. As far as this battle goes, why aren't I talking about it? It's because I have crazy special, I pretty much resist all the moves, and I have Thunderbolt. So there's really not much to say about it. I am holding on to the rare candy though. As far as Bruno goes, I don't really have Psychic or anything like that for the fighters, but since when have you ever really needed it? We have a very strong surf, it's neutral or super effective on the onyxes and it does take a couple to take the Machamp out but it doesn't matter, it's very quick and we can just move on. Now we can take a look at Agatha and our level is a little lower. I don't outspeed the two Gengar but we do have Earthquake and we know that Earthquake is the most useful in this fight right here. Now I can one shot pretty much everything. We've already seen it time and time again and since the moves are mixed up here in the Sanqui ROM I do take two Dark Pulses, one each from both Gengar, but they don't do near enough damage to really mean anything, and I'm able just to quickly go through this, and you guys are noticing a theme here. We're just destroying the Elite Four. Next up is Lance, and you already know how this one's gonna go. I got Thunderbolt for the Gyarados, then I have Ice Beam for the Dragons. It's very quick, it's very easy, and this is one of the first runs I really just kind of looked at the Elite Four, and I was like, do I need to show the whole Elite Four? Because at, to this point, Lorelai, Bruno, Agatha, Lance, they've all just been very easy, pretty much fodder. I have like the perfect coverage of moves and it's very easy. And when it's all said and done, we're really just looking at the champion fight. And this is where a lot of my refinement and all that kind of stuff really come into play. The first thing is the very nerfed version of Blizzard. It's actually very useful for this fight. So I replace Ice Beam. And I also use that last rare candy to get up to level 54. Even though examining the footage, this was an awful time to use the rare candy. But 
but like I said earlier, I have no way to really optimize the Sanqui ROMs without just doing like five or six playthroughs, and I don't want to do that. And with that said, let's just take a look at the champion and talk about some of these refinements and what needed to go down for this one. First up is Pidgeot, and it's not an issue. It hasn't been for this whole run. I will say that you shouldn't go for Blizzard here. It's You can just one-shot it with Thunderbolt. There's no reason to even try it. Next up is the Alakazam, and we do have Earthquake, but we've already seen a couple of times that we can't one-shot it. That is, unless you crit, and that's what I do here. Now, it's not really that significant because we don't take a ton of damage from Alakazam, but it is nice just to save a little bit of chip damage. As for Rhydon and the Arcanine, they are just surf bait, and they go down to a single single shot with our massive special and our 135 base power stabbed surf. Executor is next and this is why I needed Blizzard here. It has Seed Bomb in the Sanqui ROMs and it can do roughly anywhere from about 130 to about 175 health to you on a non-crit and it was really hard to survive it. Ice Beam could take it down to the red but you would have to crit to one shot it so bringing in this extra 20 base power move really made all the difference in the run and we just crit in the footage, but you gotta trust me that it was a pretty solid range just to one-shot it without it. And as for the Blastoise, it really can't do anything to us. It can survive a Thunderbolt, which I guess you can say that that is something that it should be proud of, but it just doesn't do close to enough damage, and we finish it off the next turn. And that's it. Kyogre has done it. Now, we know water is a great topping. I would rank it as probably number three. I do think normal and psychic are just overall better in a solo run, but water has proven time and time again that it's very solid when it comes to the tier list. And what sets Kyogre apart, aside from being a legendary with crazy stats, is that it gets coverage moves in Earthquake and Thunderbolt. Now, I know Polyrath got Earthquake, but Thunderbolt is a very rare occurrence on a water top and you can see immediately the dividends that it pays. That means that Gyarados isn't an issue and you just have an extra layer of coverage and along with that high base special, it was really able to go through an absolute tear of the game. Now I got crit on Lieutenant Surge. That was one of my resets. And then I got hit with an explosion on Koga and those are my only resets and those aren't even that big of a deal. Kyogre finishes with a very low level of 55, only two resets and most importantly of all, a final end game time of 2 hours and 22 minutes. Long time viewers will know that Palkia had the same exact time of 2 hours and 22 minutes and at the time Palkia got that run, that was better than any other run I've ever had and since then I've had 3 different runs that have had better times. I redid Mewtwo, I did a Haunter run, and then I redid Gengar and all of those runs pretty much set the very high standard for Pokemon. But this is pretty close, like we're talking within 5 minutes now, if we could, we talked about this earlier in when I was in Victory Road, that if I could refine these runs a little bit more, if I could get more precise without having to do extra playthroughs, and I could look at some more damage calculations and, and experience ranges and stuff like that, we could probably get some of these runs down. So I'm interested in the future in doing that. But I think about two minutes and 22 seconds, honestly, that's about as good as you can really do. And this was a great run. I wonder if we can pass it one day. I wonder if there's a Sanqui ROM that can actually actually pass this. I think we will be putting some heavy hitters up over the next month. And speaking of heavy hitters, we got Mewtwo coming up. And this one's a complete slog. I figured that I would go for Earthquake, but of course it outspeeds because I'm 15 levels lower. It uses Barrier. I do next to nothing for damage, and then I start going for Surfs for that neutral damage, but Mewtwo has such high base special that it does hardly anything, and it starts hitting some Psychics. I get low, but I am somehow, through bad move selection from the computer, I am able to barely skim by and we still we take we're on two resets still Kyogre still standing strong as one of the best runs I've ever done and that's about it for me I feel like I've been recording my run so sporadically that we're gonna give a shout out to my members here and this run was recorded a little bit later than some of the runs that are gonna release so I'm gonna have extra members on this run that aren't gonna appear on the next video so I'm trying my best to show the members guys but cut me a little slack okay D's master is an absolute madman he 
keeps gifting multiple subs in chat. So this week the list is very long. Uh, so let me take a deep breath. We got John Kegler. We got Wilfredo Smith. We got Sean Green. Cold Frost Zero. D Downing 2007. Wagua. Tanner 23. TR2G Hipster. Deal. Astrid. Nathan Meadows. Mariah Thompson. Meeves. JWJ. Mutus Dozen. D's Master. Cheesy Speakeasy. Josh Ferment. And Kendall C. Now I know at least 10 of these are pretty much gift subs and they're going to fall off soon. They've probably already fallen off by the time this video comes out, but I will like to say I just appreciate the support a lot. I don't care if only five people are supporting me. It just means a lot to me. And I think that's about it for me, guys. I don't want to ramble too long. I want to make this a shorter, more compact video, but I appreciate you sticking with me to the end. And I haven't said this. I might go back to saying it after the first of the year, but if you've made it this far and you haven't subscribed, why not? I do solo run content often, and if that's of interest to you, then you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of the channel. And if you are a returning subscriber and you're making it this far in, I appreciate your support. Share that video if you want to help me even more. And I'm not sure where we're going. I think this is still December stuff that I'm trying to really push out. So I think I got a couple more to record and I'm just going to get to it. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.